Alright, let's get started here. 
the uh, this stuff started. Uh, let me get this camera's kind of crooked. Actually, this map might be crooked. Zoomed in here a little bit. That looks like. All right. Get all this stuff laid out here. All the stuff that goes with the board. I think that's everything that goes on the board itself. Get the unboxing here in just a second. So we got a Core i7-9700K, got a, some Trident Z RGB, uh, DDR4 3200, 16 gigabytes, uh, cast latency 16, yeah, cast latency 16. We got a Sabrent uh, Rocket Q NVMe PCI Express SSD. That's going to be our boot drive. At, uh, like I said, a 9700K, uh, Z290 Aurora's Pro motherboard. And then since we're not going to be overclocking this build for right now, I mean, you could do it later on if if they want to, but uh, we're going to be using a Hyper 212 Black Edition uh, CPU cooler. So that'll be enough for stock clocks. And then uh, we also got, for bulk storage, we got a 2TB uh, Barracuda Seagate here. So, uh, so I got a one terabyte boot drive and the two terabytes for game storage or just bulk storage in general. Then for graphics, we're going with a uh, EVGA GeForce. Let's bring it over here. GeForce uh, RTX 2070 Super. This is their KO edition. Really nice card. And then we got a um, Be Quiet Dark. Power Pro 11, 650 watt, 80 plus platinum power supply, some Antec uh, 120 millimeter RGB fans, and a Fractal Design Meshify C case to bring it all together. So we will go ahead and get started here. We will get the uh, motherboard unboxed, move all this stuff over to the side a little bit. What's up, Silent Killer? Getting your bill going here. All right. So we'll get the motherboard unboxed here. See what else we got. A nice little case badge here. A little Aurora's case badge. We'll be saving that for later. We got our SATA cables. We will need one of these. So we'll keep that out. We got, uh, looks like. Uh. Really sure what that is. Look that up and see. Maybe some kind of thermal. Thermal Pro, maybe. I don't know. Like a RGB extension cable here. I'll zoom out here a little bit while we're doing this. And then uh, North Normal Insulation Manual. Big White also includes one of these little connector doodads that helps you uh, connect all those little bitty tiny front panel connectors. Got another RGB extension cable, it looks like. Two M.2 uh, standoffs. 
Let's see. Okay, the screws are already on there since it's got since it's got um, the heat spreaders on there. Got your driver disc. We don't need that. We'll download all of those all off the internet. Let's check here. Make sure that they're not funky on the RAM slots here. That's where you are. Just using two DIMMs. So most of them are standard. Use two and four, but few um, few boards are kind of weird. Oh, there's the M.2 screw stuck in this uh, manual. See the RAM page in here. Let's see what we got. Um, Installing memory is 11. Page 11. Yeah, so two modules we're using two using b2 and a2 so b2 and a2 go here and find the layout configuration somewhere here okay so i'm gonna be using b2 and a2 so yeah two and four so it's normal Put all this back in the box. If, uh, take this anti-static hey, uh, bag off of it. So, just lay it out here. Put the box away over here for now. And go ahead and get to installing the CPU. So peel this plastic off of this. This is actually the, the same board minus the Wi-Fi that I use in my personal rig. And uh, this is a uh, excellent, excellent board. Just like pretty much all of Gigabyte's offerings. It'll, uh, the VRMs on this board are expe especially good. And, uh, if they ever want to overclock the 9700K, um, they'll have no issues on this board. So, but we're not doing that today on this one. Who wants all the anti static? What's up, AR? How's it going? So uh, we'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit here. Get the CPU install. Go ahead and cut this security tape. Get out the 9700K here. I would have liked to have went 10th gen on this one, but can't find nothing in stock, so it is what it is. this box over here and we'll get to install on the CPU and then we'll do the RAM so got the uh, 90 state here because of the glare 2700k oh, go ahead and pop this out go ahead and lift this up like always matching the arrows See the little gold arrow right there by my left thumb. Without touching the bottom of the CPU, we're gonna line up with that arrow. In here, 
Give it a very slight wiggle. It's in there. And then we'll put that back down, leave the cover on. It actually goes under that screw. Pop straight off, save this. And in case they have any problems and need to RMA the board, they will need the um, the cover there. Got my thermal paste. So for this one, we'll be using again the Noctua. There are these Noctua um, NTH1, like I've used on the past couple builds. Good, uh, it's good value paste. If they ever want to overclock, um, I'd recommend like something like IC Diamond or something like that. Just for maximum temperature control. This will be good enough. Put about a P-sized dot there. Alright. Now we'll go ahead and install the CPU cooler. Eh, well, no, let's get the RAM in there first. I'm going to get the RAM in there with the CPU cooler on. Using this Trident Z RGB. Is RGB all things. Um, 3200 speed. Uh, 16 gigs, 2 8 gig sticks, and cast latency 16. So with uh, the AMD, it's or with Intel, it's on the AMD builds here lately. Um, with Intel, it's not RAM speed's not that important. Anything over 3000 is fine. So these are nice looking sticks, though. Let's say that they're kind of like a, a brushed uh, metal uh, heat spreader, and then the RGB module up top for the. The uh, RGB uh, light diffuser up top, I should say. Oh, it's okay. It's like brushed, brushed, uh, like a brushed metal black on that side and gray on this side. Pretty cool. We'll be using these two slots. We'll be using B2 and A2. We'll just drop these in here. Then we got this one. Okay. Those are good and snug in there. I'll put this off to the side. this down here okay now uh, let's do the let's do the m.2 next zoom out a little bit and we'll get the m.2 installed do that for the CPU cooler. I'm gonna be using this Sabrent, Sab I think that's how you say it, Sabrent uh, Rocket Q NVMe PCI Express M.2, one terabyte. Things are pretty solid. Also like the packaging on these, because after you open this box, it comes in like a little metal tin. If you can get the uh, box open here, The board to the side here. I just want to 
Throw this little tin off. This thing's pretty cool. So these little sabering drives, they come in like this little this little uh metal tin. I think it's pretty cool. I'm always amazed by some of the packaging some of these companies come up with. But we'll be going with that. Be pulling that sticker off there for the uh for the heat sink. Yeah. Nice packaging there, but Sabrent, 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 Sabrent. I don't know how do you say it. It's something. Go ahead and move the board back into frame here. I'm going to be taking the screw out for that M.2. Looks like to be a Phillips 1 or 2. Get out. Yeah, the screw is not going to stay in there. All right, so then we'll be taking the uh, sticker off of this. Which on these is actually a heat sink for the uh, for the drive. It's a copper copper line sticker. So we got uh, pulling the sticker off here. Now you can see right here, maybe if it'll focus. It's got copper lining under the sticker here. So it's one of the few, um, one of the few drives that it's got a sticker on it, but the sticker also serves a purpose. If you happen to be putting it in a, uh, a m.2 or on a board it's got an m.2 slot that doesn't have a heat sink so it does have a little bit a little bit there to help it the favorite rocket uh got by kingston up here got something up here by kingston on it i don't know what that chip is I also use those Fizen, Fizen controllers. Fizen. They might be using their own controller, actually. Pretty cool. So we'll save that sticker just in case. This one doesn't say warranty void if removed, so it might not matter, but... Just in case they ever need to RMA the SSD, they might need that sticker, so... Get back in the box here. Some companies, if you remove the sticker like that, it'll uh, void the warranty. I don't think this is one of them, but can't never tell. Better to be safe than sorry. But so uh, we got all the adhesive off of it. But uh, go ahead and install this into here. It's in there, good. Fill off this. It. Okay, so we're going to have to, have to install the other standoff on that one. That one needs a standoff there, so we'll have to get one of the standoffs out of the box down here. And that one screw found. So let's see here. Let's see, so we got that standoff this one they look to be about the same go ahead and cut these open I don't remember okay yeah I'd take it back I think I installed my boot drive in this one on my board I'm not 100% sure though why is it blurry been too far
<laughs> Looks like it's kind of blurry on my screen, but yeah, there it goes. All right, the autofocus is kind of slow. Let us uh, see. Head drive. Put it in this slot. Screw it in up here and then tighten it down. Phillips said. Go. I want to use the screw here. There. There, line it up. Screw here. All right. And we'll put this heat sink on there. Think about the gigabyte board, it does come with this heat sink. So. Line that up. I hold it down here for a couple seconds. There's a plastic left on there, it looks like. Oh, I got one piece here that we didn't pull. That's all of it. Hope so. So now I'll put this other screw back on here. Have the M.2 installed. Okay. Here it's all lined up. It's actually stuck on there as well. Like it is. Okay. So now we'll install the CPU cooler. Get the uh, Hyper 212 Black Edition on here. So we can want the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black Edition. Go ahead and get that put on here. Cooler Master has made their installations a lot easier over the years. It's nowhere near as hard as it used to be. Oh, set that side here stuff here unbox this real quick and again okay box this put that over there for now uh, good thing about this is it's all black Hence the name Black Edition. Everything's black uh, anodized, I guess. But, uh, we might be replacing that fan. I think I got enough RGB fans I can put one of those on here. So we'll probably be replacing that. Let's see what this is. This is a five pack. But yeah, if it'll fit, I'll put one of these RGB, one of these uh, Antec prisms on there. Go ahead and put the back plate and stuff out here. Okay. I want to get the instructions wherever they're at. Should I use the right the right uh, screw holes here? So, get the instructions out. See what we need to use. So 11.55 is what we're on. So I'm using the middle one. Okay. What we'll do. This stuff out here. Don't need these two. They're AMD brackets. The angled ones for, a, for uh, Intel tape off here real quick okay and we got those we need those Some more extra little uh, nubs there for anti-vibration um, dots I guess you could say for uh, 
an extra fan if you're going to install it. So we'll be using uh, yeah. Well, we'll be using all that stuff. I don't think we need these two or these four. Don't think. Go ahead and get that out. I will say this this paste that Cooler Master in, includes this Master Gel Pro stuff. Like I actually bought some of this, and it's it's really bad. Um, Cooler Master makes a lot of great things. Thermal paste is not one of them. But uh, see which way got here. These things just slide them over. Okay, so the got like uh, little markers here, one, two, and three, like little cutouts. We're gonna be using the LG eleven fifty five, so that is the second one up from there. That one. Lock this into this there. easier than their old method of uh old uh 212 evos and stuff they had a really really whack installation method almost required two people not bad at all Really hold it in there very good. I guess it's just enough force to uh, keep it from moving while you're installing it. So it just holds that in there enough, there enough to where that snaps into that. snaps into that little holder and just hold your uh, everything in place and you put these little nuts on there adapter here will screw into each of those so we'll go ahead and put the AMD stuff back in the bag two little screws are for AMD related possibly so uh, that one over there I think we need these so let's see what we got we got uh we'll stand off saying the little caps on there and yeah just put these on there with the tool look at the screws or for these to screw on to the CPU cooler the block itself there's one Other one here. Two. Man, it's not a cooler so easy where it is fun of getting scratches like the good old day. It is the fun of getting scratches like the good old days, yeah. You don't really gotta worry about a lot of stuff anymore. Um they streamline most stuff nowadays. Um, the only thing that's what you can really mess up nowadays is, uh, I mean, I guess you can install the cooler wrong, but the main thing that you can mess up on now is just uh, installing your CPU wrong somehow. Go on top. Go on top. On the bottom. Yep, they go on top. Okay. Alrighty. 
don't know if they went on top or on the bottom. I think it was the uh, 212. One of these older 212s. I want to say that it went on from the bottom or something. Something weird. a nice little groove they fit into put the screw in here oh yeah the 212 evo uh, uh that one you had also you had that little nub in the middle here and you had like the x bracket like this but you had to like it was like on a spring and you had to kind of like mess around with it and it was so hard to install because like if you didn't get that thing like perfect on there it was not gonna line up. I really don't miss installing those two twelves anymore. Two twelve is still a beast, yeah. The two the two twelve Evo is still good. It's just uh, it's really a pain to install. I'd rather go with one of these black editions, or I think they got an RGB one as well. To be honest, most of the big air coolers are. Our pain to install, so I can't really hate on just the just Cooler Master. They're they're all they're all equally trash. That's why you got scratches from that. Oh yeah, trying to position the the uh, spring loaded arms or whatever it was. I can uh, definitely understand understand how you get scratches from that. Because, uh, thing was a pain to install. But it was still, like, back then, even, even now, I, I don't know if this is still the budget king, but back then, that was, like, the budget king of CPU coolers. I think this thing's going to focus very well close up. It's not going to focus. Get these screwed on here. I'm going to tighten it with the little tool they provide. The material of the whatever the code was made of could be used to dice up vegetables. Yeah, that stuff was sharp. It was sharp. A lot of the cheaper ones are still like that. I know uh, Silverstone used to make one. Like all those little, those little like four heat pipe uh, single tower coolers. Like, I mean, it was pretty much the same design, but Silverstone made one. There was some other company that made one. And I mean, they were so sharp, like on these edges right here. Like now they got the, uh, they got like the little plate, but if you if you if you hit that wrong it would literally slice your finger like it would just like gouge a mark out of your finger there but at least now cooler masters got like this plate on here that uh that protects you a little bit that's kind of cool i do remember that something i don't miss either so i'll go ahead and tighten these down here Nice and snug. Get it super tight since this is still in the those uh, little nubs are just in plastic, so those little um, whatever you want to call them still just in the plastic. So I want to get it too tight. Tight enough to make sure the back plate's on there good. Not going anywhere. Every budget, every budget build the 212 and another one was the most requested. Funny that some of the new coolers come with small tools while back then we had to use the tight hand. Use what we had to tighten them, yeah. Yeah, I know, uh, Cooler Masters always came with this little, this little thing to tighten those little nubs down with, so I, so I will say kudos to them for that i got so many of these um 
but yeah a lot of them even even now a lot of them don't come with any kind of like tools some of the really cheap budget ones but uh we'll see if we can get one of these rgb fans on here real quick so i know i'm gonna have some extras i need two or three well we can do two in the front one in the back three in the front i think i think it, that match 5c supports three in the front and one for exhaust i'll be four then fifth one can go on here if it'll fit i don't know what to do what fan fan control box this over here for now hope this will fit look nice if it does if not that's fine we can use this as another exhaust i guess yeah, what is that oh fan screws all right so that over here at least they're improving the cooling on these modern day motherboards if they would use the cooling on the old motherboards some pieces would still be in good use oh yeah yeah the uh um yeah, i mean some well the, some of the older board and stuff they were tanks like um they would literally last for forever but uh cpu cooling has came a long way the uh i think the toughness or the i don't know how to describe it i guess like the durability of vrms and stuff has came such a long way that uh, they can run at extreme temperatures now and don't really got to worry about it too much. All right, let's see if it'll fit on here. We're going to use this brackets. See what kind of profile this has got. I think it'll fit. Putting it on here like this. Figure out how I'm going to route the cables i'm gonna have to put fan on afterwards though so we'll set that aside for now i think i'm gonna get to the screws the uh the mounting screws without the the uh with the fan install a little bit here Go ahead and set this on top of here. Yeah, that's clean. Oh, he's got something on. Wipe that off real quick with the um uh got coffee filters here somewhere. Hmm. Here they are. Coffee filters and some alcohol here and wipe that off. I don't like the way that looks. Kind of miss the green and brown motherboards, real OG. I really don't miss those. I'll be honest with you. Those, uh, those were so ugly. Um, nowadays, since we have choice of color, um, I would just rather have just an all black PCB. My personal opinion, but um all black's fine with me or maybe some of the white ones i know like msi and like some other brand did like an all white motherboard here recently i do like those i would like to do an all white build um i can't remember what the company was that used to make these all white all white uh, GPUs. Um, I don't remember who it was. It was the, they were Hall of Fame GPUs. I just don't remember what the company was. Used to make some white ones that were sick. Another thing I need to fix is adding tension adapters to cables so us as builders can be able to keep the fan cables and other wires inside of the case looking nice and hidden. Tension adapters. Yeah, it's, it, it's 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 just hard to uh, hard to make like universal stuff because like you got so many options you're building like there's no 
really no set way or set you know i don't know how to describe it like set uh hardware you know you can there's so many different processors so many different kinds of fans you can use a number of fans i mean i get i get what you're saying it's just kind of hard to to figure it out but but uh but i'm all for them trying to come out with new stuff that makes that makes cable management easier um that's what takes me the longest so anything that can improve or knock off time on that i'm all for that things started here Hard enough so it doesn't fly off here. Yeah, the white GPUs are pricey though because not many orders came in for them. I haven't seen that many white GPUs of the of the of the uh, RTX series. I haven't really looked in a while. I I think it was Galaxy that used to make those. I don't I don't know if they still make GPUs. The Galaxy Hall of Fame. Or the, uh, the all white ones from a couple years ago. They were pretty sick looking. They made all white GPUs. Hard to find all white GPUs now, I guess, unless you go maybe a white water block or something, maybe. I don't know. Kind of debate now doing a custom loop on my personal build might wait till the 3090 comes out or 3080 ti whatever they're gonna call it and might do a custom loop on that one i said i'd never do it because of the maintenance but i don't know i don't like to do it i did a custom loop in a long time not something that's common anymore, sadly. I guess it never was common, but something that uh don't ever see anymore. Let's see if this uh plan will fit. So these on here well if I go on the on the front oh can't go on the front I would have to go on the uh, side here inner inner holes try to get that there gonna come out of that bottom one didn't it Get that one in there first and then we'll uh the other one on there and up here they might go on the the other one, I just don't have it all the way one. It does go on the front. Don't really see how it would. Don't have enough room, but if you put it on the back, you got too much room. Very loose on there. I need to use those uh, vibration pads. Maybe that'll give me enough clearance there. It'd be awesome if they added the option to color our components before they ship out. Yeah, that would be pretty sick. Or if they could, or if they could just make um, different SKUs of the, uh, they get like a, like, uh, like say you go to order a, 
GPU from Newegg or whatever, and you just have a drop down box that you know you choose your choose your uh, your third party third party board partner like UVGA or Gigabyte, whoever. Then after you choose that, choose your model of your GPU. Say it was a 2080 Super. Choose that. So you want a Gigabyte 2080 Super, but you want it in green or something. They have like a little drop-down box, and your, your actual cooler would be in green or something. I don't know how they would uh, go about that, but that'd be kind of cool. Have the same thing for the motherboard and the RAM and everything. They would uh, kind of do different color builds and. You wouldn't have to do RGB for color. You could just literally just have the color uh, based on your what component colors or com colors of your components that you chose. Whether it was a 20, 2080 or uh, MSI motherboard or whatever. Have like a green MSI motherboard and a blue Gigabyte GPU or something. I don't know. Kind of whatever you wanted, you know. Kind of cool. I don't think that's going anywhere. I think so, anyways. Alright. So it did fit on there. Wasn't sure if it was or was going to or not. Okay. Yeah, it's on there pretty good. Some builders, some builders would go to the extreme and take tape up certain parts and your special paint and have it customized. Yeah, you can do that. Um, uh, I mean, you can paint the whole board using something like Plasti Dip, something like that, but um, then you run into like other issues like painting the VREM or like the fins on a, on a heat sink is going to reduce the cooling by a certain degree. Just because uh, the paint's gonna hold the heat in there. That's why a lot of these cut a lot of the companies go with like uh, anodizing and whatever the other one is for uh, colors and stuff. But you can like plasti dip the board. You can plasti dip. I wouldn't recommend plasti dipping like VRMs and stuff. I'd probably paint those with some kind of like ceramic paint or something if I was gonna go through all that. But but uh, yeah, you can do it. Just just not not optimal i guess you could say i wouldn't personally do it unless it was just like an old board or something that i was just messing around with because if you paint something and screw it up you can't rma the board because you painted it and um if you ever have an issue down the road, you can't automate the board because you painted it. Most places aren't going to take it back. You do something like that because they're going to try to say that the reason that it broke was because you painted it. But if you, if you wanted to do that, you could. I've seen it done before, but something I would recommend personally. Also, they desoldered with their soldering kit and take everything off, painted the board, and put everything back on. Works fine. Also, they desoldered all the chips. Yeah, that's that definitely would not go through all that. I mean, if you have the skills to do that, you can go for it. But I can solder a little bit, but I'm not skilled enough to take components off a board, then. Uh, and put them back on there, especially after painting it. Just that's insane. If you're skilled enough to do all that, you can go for it. Just uh, not for me. I get stuff cleaned up over here real quick. I don't have a total mess out here like I did last time. Now we will, I guess, prep the case. We'll put this over to the side. 
Put this enough room over here. I got enough room. We set this over here. Now. To me, too much time taken on that project. Yeah. Yeah, if you're going to sit there and desolder every, every little chip and, uh, um, capacitor and everything off the board, I know uh, that's, that's, that's not, not for me either. Sorry, I sent a message, but I'm going to get the, uh, I'm going to get the case out here. Got to get enough room here. It's fractal cases. It's not really big, I guess. It's a decent size, though. It's a decent size case. Set out here. I have to uh, switch camera angles. So we'll bring that in here. Bit. new lights here i don't know if it's gonna help or not i get a mean glare off that side panel and do all that take all this tempered glass side panel but using the fractal design mesh if i see this will be the first time i built in this case Built in a fractal design. What's their old one? Fine R4. Back in the day. It's a really good case too. This does not have protector on the back. It looks like. Where am I gonna set this at? I find room for this so it doesn't get scratched up. Okay. So we do need to take the go and take the side panel off too. Go ahead and take it out. Or maybe these screws off. God, that one's on there good. They're awful tight for a thumb screw. Put this off to the side here. And we will turn it around. We'll go ahead and get the uh, parts box out. See, how does this front panel come off? Okay, it just snaps on there. But we'll have to get that off to get that fan out. It comes pre installed with two of their fans. I don't know if it's the uh, they're good fans or they're like crappier fans. Fractal makes some pretty Decent fans, actually. That filter for that. Uh, okay. Front mounted dust filter. Kind of new. It's off. Really good place to grab it here. Not a good place to grab this. There it goes. There wasn't a good place to grab it there. We'll go ahead and get that off. Go ahead and get this fan out. We won't be using this. Let me get a parts. Uh, magnetic parts bin here. All the case screws in here. The bottom, yep. We'll go ahead and get this fan out. We'll get the RGB fans in here. Uh, we will so you get this out get the fans in here and then get the power supply then we'll probably do the mother well we'll get the motherboard in here after the fans 
Do a power spa last. But I haven't, I've never used these Antec fans before either. But uh, that was a pretty good deal for a five pack, so. Fuel's not gonna need a whole lot of airflow. I mean, it's gonna need some. I'm not doing any overclocking. This uh, EVGA card is got a, is a two fan, yeah, two fan heat sink design, so it'll be more than adequate. So we'll put three. I think it can fit three. Might take this, whatever this thing is. Might just put two here and two as exhaust. So I might put another exhaust up top up here. Um, because we would have to put, if we're going to put three, we would have to remove this and you're just going to start showing the cables and stuff. And I just want it to be extra clean, but we're not going to do that. Flip it around here towards the back. Go ahead and remove this fan. I mean, hang on one of these lights up a little bit. I got the lights placed. I don't know how to not exactly place them here, so bear with me on that. Exactly where I need them at. Okay. I'm just taking this back fan out. RGB fans installed. Get my power screwdriver out for this stuff. A lot faster than this one. That fan out. All right. Set it off to the side here. Go ahead and install the rear 120 here. Uh, and as exhaust, probably, well, you know, I can run that up like that. So I got that screwdriver here, see if it's charged up. All right, it is. So we'll use that. Going back fan in. Sorry if y'all can hear the uh, screwdriver noise. Yeah, this is a lot faster. A lot faster. This one's really low torque too, so could potentially use it to all like the motherboard and stuff, but um, I don't recommend using any kind of power powered screwdriver or anything like that to install the motherboard screws just because could uh could over tighten them torque on the screwdriver is really low so it doesn't really matter but that's a possibility i guess so we'll go ahead and put two more of these in front we'll put one up here at the top too the one up here at the top is exhaust. And we'll put these other two in the front right here and here.
Welcome everybody. Um, if you'd like to enter the giveaway, giving away three months of Xbox Live, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate PC. So enter that if you want to. Otherwise, just uh, sit back and enjoy the stream. If you'd like to know the specs, uh, exclamation mark build in the chat will give you that. Or you can ask me and I can read them off. Go ahead and run these wires through here first. Run through here so that uh, don't worry about it whenever I'm staying up there. Here. I had to put the bottom one in first just to see where to put the top. They get lined up. I'm thinking they'll stack up like that. So get another one here and see real quick. This way we'll have two intakes and two exhausts. It might it'll work out pretty good. Alright, so we'll get this uh, bottom here. Fun to feed all this stuff too. Could use the built in RGB software from Gigabyte, but it's pretty bad. So we're probably just going to go ahead and use the included controller with these. Came with the uh, these Antec fans. Forgot a way to mount it to where they can get to it without. Without opening the case, yeah, might have to get a little creative with that. I'm pretty sure it's a uh, it's a little controller box. I think it comes with like a remote or anything. Let's see what we got here on these. Mount that down there. Go ahead and mock this up real quick. that one mounted down there at the bottom then we can get the one at the top put on get it all lined up I'll put two screws in on this one for now and then we will see where we're at here so we're going to move it up a little bit looks like anyways yeah, that right there is about the a little bit more. All right, get this other one put at the top here. Get the top one mounted. See how it goes. I like we're going to move that one up just a little bit. The mounting for these is kind of weird. It'll stay there for a second. Top screwed in here. Okay, then we'll have to move this one up just a little bit. Oh, they're nice and even. Well, 
the last two put in the top here and then we'll just mount the last one there at the top we might save that one actually load out um might save the top one after i get the board in here because i don't know how much clearance we're gonna have at the top so put these on for now we'll come back to the one they're gonna mount up here at the top in the back lost so now i put the front panel back on sure it's on there good okay go ahead and drop the board in here we'll do the power supply last lay it down here and i'll switch to overhead zoom out here on the overhead a little bit i'll go ahead and route these real quick so I don't have any issues. I want to install all the uh, standoffs too. Now I'm pre-installed. Now I looked and seen that. Awful nice of fractal. We'll route these up through here. And through that's what it fit through that grommet right there. Pull it through here real quick. Do look how it's got grommet saving up here at the top though. That's pretty nice. Not all that through there. All right. Hopefully that doesn't get in the way of the. Uh... It is gonna get in the way, I think. We'll have to really be careful not to get that in the way of the IO shield. Uh, hopefully that'll stay there. We are back. Got you, AR. It's all good. All these standoffs. We got in here. Give you a little cleaning cloth for your tempered glass side panel. Nice. A little touch there. Go ahead and get these standoffs installed. Let's see where we need them at. So we need three at the top, three in the middle, three at the bottom. Yep, there we go. One. It would include black standoffs. I'll have to use our tool to uh, tighten them down. I don't really go in that far with the uh, hand tighten them in there. Kind of weird. That's why you get they give you this little tool. Yeah, three in the middle. That one's gonna be there for the standoff. How far is that one? Looking like that middle one. Probably need. Wound up with that one though, so this one actually. Kind of slippery. And get this one started because the standoff's really slippery for some reason. Okay, come on. Come on now, Mr. Standoff. I'm gonna get the tool on this one, see if I can get it started anyways.
I can't get this started. Push my hand. There we go. Need that, I guess. That's three in the middle, then three at the bottom. That's these right here. There's other three down there. There's other things are rivets. So like anyways. I'm gonna test which screws need here. Or put this last end off in. I'm probably gonna have to have the tool on that one too. Get it started on that other one. Might have it on this one too. No. I'm gonna have to have it on that one too. So let's see which screws we use. Looks like it's not toolless on the hard drive either. Tragic. Screws we gotta use. Oh, looking like it's the. Is the, the other ones? Put them in the parts tray here. Make sure, these fit. Could be a standard for motherboard screws. Didn't seem to go all the way down though. Hmm. See which screws the manual says. Just to be safe, because those, those neither one of them went all the way down by design, but. Check it out anyways here. Just saying use those. Don't go all the way down though. I mean it's compensating for motherboard. The thickness of the board, I guess. I don't know. It says to use, so we'll use that. Tighten all these down with the tool here. I gotta get that last one installed. Okay, there's two more to install. They're gonna go. These in here nice and snug. Nothing too tight. Snugged up there so that we can screw in there and it won't start turning the stand off. Snug up the rest of these. I'll drop the board in here. Moves. I do a little bit. Snugged up that one. Okay. The glass two here. Got the board in. Actually, with that Hyper 212, I might have to, that 212 Black, I might have to uh, go ahead and install that fan. 
Well, let's test fit here. Do a little test fit. I got enough clearance to get the fan in there. Yeah, it shouldn't be an issue. Be an issue. I get on this peg. There we go. Here we got all three, six, and then it looks like nine. Flip it around here real quick. Get all those. Yep. I think lined up. So we'll go ahead and get it screwed in here. Throwing screws over here. Those two, then we got three up here at the top and three at the bottom. I was really sure if we was gonna have enough clearance for the that fan in here. We might have to install the fan last though, because I still gotta get the uh the eight pin and looks like a four pin in here. The eight pin, yeah, eight pin and a four pin. For the power here, so probably install that fan with the very last right before we do cable management. This last screw in here, and then like uh, power supply in here, I guess. Okay. With all that. All this so we wear. I keep all this stuff organized here. We will need those hard drive screws here in a minute, though. Keep those in there. We'll be needing these hard drive screws. It's kind of tragic that 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 uh, those bays aren't coolest. The hard drive bays now are all toolless, but. Whatever. No big deal. The uh, tower flipped around here. What? Here. Make sure all the ports are... Ah, man, we caught that fan cable. I'm kind of afraid of that. What? Uh, lift this up real quick. I'll lift this board up a just a tiny bit here. I'm gonna unscrew these last three here. Enough to lift it up so I can get that cable out. Let's see where that cable even at. Get these cables back through here. I'm kind of afraid of that. I thought I had it all, all routed to where it wouldn't do that, but end up catching one of them. Can't clear it here.
kind of afraid this might happen because of how close that uh, cable was. I put that fan in there. But I wanted to go ahead and get the fan in there because I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough clearance. Words. Got the board in there. Cable's kind of twisted here too. If it was flat, we could easily get it out. Twisted. Be a little more tricky. Why did that board open right there for a second? Got to push it through there. So you don't have like another spudger paper clip here. That through there. There it goes. Got it all out. Yeah, there we go. All right. I get those screws tightened back down. Good to go. Minor issue, but nothing. Nothing we can't fix. See what we got. I'm gonna lose back there. Just the uh just the shield, I guess. Alright. So now we'll go ahead and go to cam. So now we can route. We're not sitting on any fan cables back here. I'm gonna go ahead and route the uh, back through there. We need to route the ones for the CPU as well. So we'll go ahead and put that through here. Then we'll route the CPU fan header or fan connector back in through here. Should be right here, the very top one. Plug that in. On it back here, whichever cable it is, okay. Wrap this back in here. Plug it up. See if I can get past these cables real quick. Cable all the way for a second. I'm going in, then we'll get the cables back up here. Back through. There we go. All right, let's get the these fan, these other fan cables. We'll go ahead and get those routed around here, so y'all can see somewhat, anyways. Go ahead and. Power supply installed. After that, we we'll get everything plugged in there. I'm going to put that last fan up here. I can get the fan header through here. Also, I don't know if I got enough. We have enough fan headers. So we got three at the bottom. We got the CPU optional. We can also use needed. And what else we got? 
three right here. Oh, so we got, got two more right there for the pumps. We can use one of those. Still should be able to control the fan speed on those. All those fails, we can just use a splitter. Let's split one of these down here. So like one, two, one, two, and three, and then four. Plug this. We can plug one of these in the CPU optional though. I don't. Want, I don't really want to plug it into the pump. Unless I have to. Um, on some of these boards, you can't configure it to not run at 100%. This one you should be able to, though. If I remember correctly, you should be able to configure all the speeds. Smart fan. It's called smart fan on Gigabyte. Fix all those fan tables. Now we'll get the power supply installed here. See, we will move some of this stuff around real quick. I've got screws in it. Move all that over there. Put this uh, back up there. I also got to install the controller for the fans and the that last fan. All these spare fans over here. Somewhere. I'll set this box down here too. Okay. Get the power supply box out here. See if I can do an overhead on it real quick. Caps came off. Okay. Go into an overhead on it. I hit this one a minute ago. There we go. Knocked it off a little bit, but all good. When unbox this this beast of a power supply. Probably a little overkill for this build, but power supplies are so hard to find right now in the 500 to 650, 700 watt range. I saw this one in stock on Newegg, and I just went ahead and bought it. It's uh, coming down to it now to where I almost have to just watch Newegg for power supplies and just try to keep them in stock. And just whenever I get somebody that needs a build, just... Uh, just uh, already have one already have one in stock and on my side because if not then it's hard to find them well actually it's nearly impossible to find them actually but so it should be very good put all this back in here we'll have to say i haven't used a be quiet power supply before i've used a lot of their uh a lot of their uh, CPU coders, their Dark, Dark Rock series and stuff, but I have not had the opportunity to use any of their their uh, power spots. We're gonna get all the cables out here that we need. Nice, it comes in this nice little box though. So these are like. Uh, they're not sleeved cables, but they're they're really nice braided cables. They uh they look really good. So let's see what we got here. This is it's like CPU and Molex. There's some SATA. So they're not bound together individually. They got stuff grouped together. Here's PCI. This is VGA one two. PCI motherboard. That's PCI slash motherboard. Okay, it's kind of weird. What is this? Dark Power Pro OCK. Hmm. Never seen that. 
We'll have to look through the manual on that one and see what that is. Maybe some kind of quiet fan mode or something? I don't know. Kind of strange. It's, it doesn't have a quiet fan mode, so. Go through here and see what we got. Got a uh, accessories page eight. Power supply includes the following accessories: cable management, cable set, slot cover with overclocking key, jumper for permanent and enabling of overclocking function, manual lead operating manual. What is the Overclocking key. What does that even mean? Now what the overclocking is. Overclocking key. The overclocking key groups the individual 12 volt rails to a single 12 volt rail you can enable the overclocking function permanently by setting the jumper provided directly at the power supply or you can enable the overclocking function by pressing the switch on the clock cover provided needed the overclocking key is connected to the power supply using the connector labeled accordingly when you switch on the overclocking function slot the led on the slot cover switch only press the overclocking key when the power supply is switched off only connect the overclocking key or jumper provided to the overclocking key connector on the power supply. Do not connect any other devices to the fan. So it, so it groups all of them into just one 12 volt rail in case you're going to use it for like multi GPUs, I guess, or multi power supply. You can also connect fans up to this. I've never seen that though. Just put everything on a single 12 volt rail, I guess, instead of uh, multiples. Just needed everything. Thing on one rail, we're, we're not gonna, not gonna really need that. But I don't really know why you need that on a 650 watt power supply. But whatever, whatever. All right, so we're gonna connect all these before we put them on there. So let's see what we got here. I got a motherboard. It's already connected. It's all good and good and dandy here. So what we got here? We got PCI motherboard. I we'll need that. It goes into one of these. And then we got like uh, Molex. I don't need any Molex, but I'll connect one of them anyways. Pretty sure nothing in here uses Molex. Get up a little bit, frame a little better. What else we got here? Like PCI Express cables. I like with BGA on this one. Need a. What do I need for this? It eights on this 2070 or it says it on the box. Go ahead and do I mean it can't be more than two eights. We'll go ahead and connect two of these. Okay, we can just do this. This has got two eights on it. That'll be enough. My twenty set, my twenty eighty didn't even have a, didn't even have but two eights. So two eight uh, PCI Express, like more Molex, CPU one or two, four P eight. What is this? P eight P four. Oh. That's just a 24 pin. This is just a 4 pin PCI. Got these other ones for the. This is a 8 pin. That's a 6 pin. We need a.
need this this one p8 that one here so that'll give us a four pin and our eight pin and a six that i think that's everything we need that's sada we need sada we'll connect one of these for sada I'll have to have SATA for the SS. No, wait. That was a PCI Express SSD, so we just need SATA for the for the hard drive. Okay, that's everything. Now we'll get all this put in there. Bracket off. Uh, bracket off here with my screwdriver. Power supply in here. So when it fits in there. Hope so. All these cables. Octopus mess of cables. Some route them up in here. Fits in there that way. Yeah. There. Music. Is it done? Quit. The. There we go. I don't know what happened there, but got it fixed. That in there. Put the bracket on here first, though. To get the screws for it. Hmm. Really big, nice thumb screws. What those are for? Using the normal, actually, I think they're longer than normal power supply screws. Because it has to get through this uh, rubber grommet thing that's on here. What I'm gonna assume, anyways. We can't get this installed. Yeah, these screws in here. Snugged up. There we go. Oh, we'll in there all the way. I'm screw screwed in. Maybe. The thumb screw not lining up with the hole. Yeah, there it goes. All right. 
down there. Now. All right, so now we can go ahead and get started plugging everything up. Some of these cables out of the way. Here. So I'll get everything plugged up and then mount that. Actually, I'll plug these cables for the motherboard up real quick and we'll mount that last fan. Uh, let's see what we got. PC Express motherboard. Plug the other motherboard. There too. Sorry. P8. That's it. What we need. Can't get this. Or it's not going over any other cables. The P8 go. Okay, so this one. I'll go ahead and try to get this plugged in. Four pin motherboard connector in here, Norris. There's CPU one and two. We might have to put that one on there. I don't think I can get to it without taking it back out. Probably not. Go ahead and pull it back out enough to where I can get to it. Oh yeah, I can get this cable on here. Uh, go here. This CPU one and two here. Route it through here. Go. Everything's plugged in real good. Put everything back through here. Now we should be good to plug the everything in. Plug in the CPU. CPU power. It's labeled kind of weird on this one. All good though. All right. Now we gotta find. Need this. This is our four pin. The eight pin is this P eight. Yes. Now back around here. I don't think it's clean any cables. Yeah, system fan hitter right there too. Let's plug this fan in actually. That. System fan header that's up here. Extremely hard to get to. Seems like borderline impossible to get to here. Clean the uh, DRM heatsink and the the uh, 
Motherboard power. Down, I think. Good. Hey, but there's a hand header right here I'm trying to get to. Get the pins on there and get it, get it lined up. This is a really bad place for a fan header. I get some needle nose pliers down there. I get my fingers down in there. Get it down there with these pliers. Get it started where I can finish it. Get you on that corner right there and just try to get it started down there. Man. Right here is tricky. So I can't really see it either. Got it on there, I think. Like it's on there. Yeah. All right, just take some needle nose pliers. Got it. Okay. Back out here. All right, so I got that one. We'll go ahead and pull it tight here. Doesn't interfere with the board power. We'll go ahead and get those plugged in. So you see, we use. Probably should plug now. Well, go ahead and get the eight pin in. It's gonna be hard to get both of them in there. Really gonna matter. Eight pin. Here it is. Four pin. We probably don't really need. I'm not gonna be doing any kind of like serious overclocking. That's mainly what that four pin is for. Go ahead and get it plugged in here. Fan cable. The way. Actually wrapped around that now. Pull this back out. Table is now wrapped around the power. Okay. Okay. Now let's see if we can get it in there. Just one always the hard one to get in there
if I can see it. Got the camera angle. And uh, go to this other one to kind of fold back here a little bit. Fan cable out of the way. Try to, anyways. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Got them both in there. Okay. I'm going to get the motherboard connector. Front panel and everything last. Try to get that hard drive installed too. I'll go ahead and do the hard drive. Hard drive in. Before I forget. Do the hard drive, then we'll actually do that last fan. So. Always on the RGB connectors. The hard drive's put in. If I can see the A's in here. Alright. They are not toolless. Put this over here for a second. Overhead. It's uh, Seagate Barracuda. I usually don't recommend Seagate drives just because the failure rate's so high, but... Um... Or has been in the past. But with the recent problems that Western Digital's having. I thought I'd give Seagate another shot. So here we are. I mean all hard drives are gonna fail eventually. It's just part of part of it's just part of owning a hard drive, but um in the past Seagates have had a very high failure rate. But willing to give everybody a second chance. You know, with the way Western Digital has been doing business here lately, I just kind of left a bad taste in my mouth with them, so I'll still buy their products, but I want to rate it anyways. It seems that the the slowdowns are only happening with the uh, the lower tiered hard drives. They're using slower lower chips, so your transfer rates, read and writes, were really really bad, like extremely slow. Even for even for a hard drive, slow. But but uh, seemed like their top tier stuff was not affected. But I don't know. Plus, the Seagate drives are reasonably priced now compared to Western Digital. You can get a two terabyte. This two terabyte Seagate was about the same. Was ten dollars more than a one terabyte Western Digital Blue. It's also saving two hundred RPM. So, price on these is really good. Go ahead and get this. Try the cable plugged in. Put it in there. We're going to get the power. Yeah, this one needs a set of power. I'm going to get it plugged in too. Okay. And then we'll switch back to side cam. Go ahead and slide her in here. Get all that out of the way. Slide in this first bay here. So I have it back. Wait, did I install that backwards? Man. Installed the hard drive backwards. I ain't paying attention. Leave the cables on there. Won't even pay attention to the orientation. Mm 
Oh, it looked kind of weird there for a minute. Go. Right now. Is. Line back up here. Well, I screw in here and tighten that on the top there. Okay. Now I got it. Go back to the side. Then we will put her in here now on the right way. Maybe. Goes. in there on the side of cable real quick front here round we can plug in the SATA cable which one of these SATA one So it's looking like one, zero, two, three, four, five. So the very bottom one. And don't have a whole lot of clearance here. I guess at least a lot of, at least the, uh, a lot of the cable will show. Good anyways. That plugged in. Go and get the uh, other board cable plugged in. Um, route this one. Got it like this. Here. On those split cables where it's a 20 plus 4 pin. Kind of stupid. Makes it that much harder to line up. Especially the ones that don't lock like this. I'm not a fan of these. The ones that lock, where you put the 4 pin on there, those are not bad. Don't lock like this are really a pain. Turned here. I get plugged in. Really tight. Phone 4 pin. Yeah. Yeah. In there. It's in there. Sure, real good. Okay. What about that? No, I was blocking the camera for most of that, but that cable wound up. I don't think it is in there all the way. It doesn't feel like that snapped down all the way. You got a flashlight. On there. 
It's all good. So now we'll do we got the eight pin. These fans plugged up. We do the front panel, I guess. Plug the front panel. Hooked up. Turn a little bit. I think I'm going to use the little carrier that Gigabyte includes. Not very obtrusive. Or it's not very, uh, it won't be visible. Whenever, uh, everything on there. Well, what's what here? Fan cables separated each other and everything else. Those over there. Go ahead and do C three. It real quick. Top one here. See here. So kind of tricky. This is one of the connectors that you can actually rip the uh, socket off the board if you're not careful, or just bend a bunch of those pins. And you got to go in there and unbend pins or. A while I did that by mistake a couple times not fun uh, we'll be using this little carrier from uh, gigabyte actually overhead probably better for that we're gonna be using this little carrier gigabyte just uh Makes it easier to use to connect your front panel. So, what we're going to be doing, go ahead and get all the wires lined up here. Plug in HD audio there, too. Let's see what we got. Power switch is. Somebody shooting off fireworks near my house. Either they're shooting off fireworks or getting shot at. I don't know which one. But uh, as long as nothing starts flying through the windows, I'm not going to worry about it. Sounds more like fireworks. Oh, just plugging all these in. Little carrier here. Don't have to do this, but it does make it a little easier on the person. Got all this back into here. Gotta keep it under all this stuff. Turn it back around here. See where the front panel stuff is. Here, right there. We plug it in right here. And like, if we line up the power LED. Our LED. Ooh, I'm not plug up the power LED. Yeah, I missed a couple here. Thought I was like, I'm missing something here. I miss power LED. Redo that real quick. I don't remember plugging in the power LED. 
Because I did not. Power LED here, we'll plug it in real quick. Plus and minus. Now let's try it again. Back in here. Okay. Now let's see. Power LED and HTD LD. Go like this. Be it. Plug me in. I'll pull these back through a little bit here. Okay. Let me put that fan in up there. But, uh, HD audio. I don't know if they use it or not, but we plug it in anyways. know if it gets used but just in case see where it has to go let's go all the way over there try to route it around under some of this stuff oh. cable management a little easier kind of route it under stuff so where I go to zip tie everything I don't have to be unplugging stuff and whatnot go right here plug in the audio Go ahead and get that fan installed up here. Last fan. So this way we'll have two intake, or yeah, two intake and two exhausts. And the CPU cooler, which is push. So bringing in clean air, pushing air through the fins of the CPU cooler to keep the CPU cool. And exhausting it out the top here and out the back here. Now we will have plenty of airflow. Good to go. Plenty of airflow and good to go. Get routed through the sole. Pocket up here, which is already full. Figure it out. Like fit, getting all this through there. We gotta figure out where we're gonna plug that fan in it. I got enough headers. Wait and see. Then right there, we're going to put mount it right there. Exhaust. 
top of the CPU cooler so I can get this first screw lined up. Next one's here. I'll have to move it over a little bit since my top cam is there in the way. That mounted as exhaust. Should be good. So intake, uh, exhaust back and top here. We'll put this this uh, mesh and filter back on it. Good. Now we gotta get the RGB controller set up. And the uh, what else we gotta get plugged in? I get the GPU put in here and plugged up. I don't think of anything else. All these fans plugged up. Pretty much just plugging everything up now. So we'll do. We can do three fans at the bottom here. Got this one. If all three of these will fit, we can just plug them all up right here. Actually, it'll work out nice. All of them will reach. All these ones in the front will. Hopefully. That. That. Going around all this mess. Find the one in the back here. Okay. Need to get all three of these. See how we're going to do this one. I'm about to come up right there. Maybe. Do one fan at a time, yeah. One. Last one, where'd it go? Where did it go? There it is. Had it. Okay. Put under all this. Okay. Down through all this. Here. Okay. Plug all these in. Plug all these in. That one in that system fan header. One into the next. Flip around here. And that one into the last one. Maybe. That one not going in. Like a room between them. Come on, maybe I didn't have it lined up. All right. Uh, pull all these through here. Looking halfway decent. Maybe. Out. Those two there. It actually, we need to got this. Got that through there too. Make it a lot cleaner. 
it. Thing on. I don't think will not fit all the way through there. So we we'll do each individual one of these. Out here. Pull these out. Okay. Reroute it to the bottom there. Keep them together. Try to keep them together so we don't any of them. All of them. Got reset power LED and power LED light or LED. Gonna run these up to here real quick. Want to even make it look easier? I'll make it for a cleaner cable run. I'm all for, I'm all for making it look cleaner. No, down here with a graphics card, you might not even be able to see it. So, like, for it's uh, the best it can. Reset right here. And there. Yeah, we got really D here. That D L E D is right here. And power switch is on the other side. I just gotta run it up with this. Let's see what it say here. HDD LED is on that side. Plug it in like that. They're good. Tables are plugged in. There we go. There we go. Pull all these back through here. Best we can. Find them back there. Back through. Now instead of I was running through this grommet here, ran up through there so it looks a little better. There we go. Okay. We'll, um, fans all wired up. Got the does have USB two? Does it? All USB three in the front. So you get HD audio. Uh, plugged up. I think I gotta put the GPU in here. Run cables for that. About it. Put it over on its side here and overhead. It's all the GPU. Do a little unboxing of the GPU here. Set it up over. Set this out of the way. Do a little GPU boxing here. That's a GeForce RTX 2070 Super VGA KO edition. Very good, very good card. Packaging, maybe. Really good.
box to the side. Up here. Up. Cool. Relation guide here. I don't know. Might need that. Part itself. Take a look at it real quick. Here, so let peel off all this. So it looks pretty nice. I got a four pin and a six pin here. Or eight pin and a six pin, my bad. Uh, like it's uh, NV Link compatible as well. For outputs out here. Yeah, two display port, three display ports, and an HDMI. So standard outputs for for a card. I like how EVGA like on their uh, fans they put their their E logo on there. I think there's a super logo. Plastic on there. I want all these. Pull off all these. Plastic bits. Method I found just using a plastic spudger and going after it. Plastic spudger won't scratch it, so. And all that off. Looks pretty nice, though. I like these, uh, I like these EVGA KO cards. They are quite nice. Oh, dude. Plastic out of here. What else is in the box here? You get a case badge as well. Not. Huh. VGA doesn't include any uh, discs or anything anymore. Well. Alrighty then. Shit, like a case badge and everything with this stuff. That's all we got. What's up? Back in the box over there. Got this. Back in here. Now we'll go ahead and install this real quick. Down here. See where this is gonna go. Put plastic on that too. There is crap. It's everywhere. Okay. I think this is the top light up. If I'm not mistaken. Twenty seventy super. Light up. I'm putting the first slot here. Looks like we're gonna be using second and third slot there. Go ahead and take those off.
Okay. Stall it here. Shut down. Hey, okay. not really good. Oh, cover on this too. What even? An EVGA. Ah, how's that need this fucking cover up? People blow my mind. Car, you can give this thing away. No. The. Uh, oh, what are you talking about? The computer I'm building? I'm talking about the computer. I'm not giving away the computer. The three month Xbox Live Game Pass. Or a PC. The install, now we'll just have to route the uh, PCI Express cables here. Touching that. All right. The other one. Other camera here. I get with you soon. Have you put some new things in my PC? We can do it. Hit me up. It's just dubs, right? Like Jody's friend dubs. Oh, we've met a couple times. Oh, okay, making sure. Got you. PCI cables at. One of them. Turn this thing around here. Let's see. Where these PCI cables went. They're just. A VGA cable split off. Wait, what's that? There it is. I think I want a new board and card, possibly an SSD. Yeah, we can do that. Um, probably go rising, depending on your budget. Unless you want to go Intel, we can go Intel. Doesn't really matter. We put a little more bang for your buck with Ryzen though. That too short there. Try to get these untangled. This mess. There's that one. The other one is actually pretty free, so. What we got here. That'll work. I'm gonna go. I go under all this shit. There. Our best bet. The other VGA cable. I just won't be able to play RuneScape on max detail with any issues. I mean, I can already do that, just not as smooth as I would like it sometimes. Yeah, if you just want RuneScape, we can do Ryzen. It'll save you some money and it'll be way more than you need. Uh, depending on what, you, what you're looking to spend, uh, what kind of... Wait, did you, what did you say you want to do? Just GP... A GPU two new board and card. Okay, yeah, probably Intel. Don't see that part, my bad. Probably Intel. Yeah, you can go Intel if you want to. For that, like for RuneScape, without looking 
looking up anything i'd probably recommend ryzen you save a little money and you're gonna get about about the same performance intel mainly if you play a lot of AAA games and you just don't really have a budget but we can go either way or plugged up here Eight pin plugged in here, maybe. Lined up correctly. Oh, I got. Ooh. Right back at you. Hold on. goes what's i getting these connectors lined up on this power supply is really aggravating zip tie that right there zip tie that back a tiny bit or zip tie that uh, connector back i mean just so it looks a little nicer Snip that off there. Okay. Look a little better. Get this one plugged in. Right. Now we just gotta get that pushed back a little bit. Under there, make it look kind of nice. Look real nice. Not doing any cable management, but just kind of thing back, everything around back to where it needs to be. I like really like literally no space between this card, the cables, and that grommet. It's actually kind of crazy how little space there are. There is. Okay. Go like that. Good. So, I think we're ready for a test boot. No, no, no. Hope we're not. We gotta get the RGB controller set up. It's not heavy now, though. Some weight to it now. Real management won't be too bad back here, I don't think. Wait and see though. I get the RGB controller here set up. All right. Oh wait, so this controller actually. Have to be plugged into the motherboard steel. Even though you got the controller. Let's just do a hub. The RGB software on Gigabyte's not great. So probably do more stuff with this controller than you can anything else. Well, we can go ahead and plug it in here, I guess. WM LED and then the LED control. What is it? 
I'm going to the cable for the LED control. Two pin something. This is a three pin RGB. Let's see if it'll just work with just power and all the, uh, all the, and all the, um, I've plugged into it. Should have plugged another SATA cable. I forgot about this. We'll just plug in the LEDs for now. Draw three pin. What we got, see what the controller does without plugging in the motherboard RGB. I don't really understand how that's going to work. Also, plug in the fans into this too. I guess I could just plug that in without the fan. Fan, PWM fan controller plugged in, but see how this route turns out first. See, there's that one. All these are. Get every one of them here. Or that one up between something there. Lost a cap in there too somewhere. I'll find that here in a minute. Got one more here somewhere. What do we got here? What ones do we not have plugged in? This one? Last one? Try it like this. See what the... See what works. Cleaned up a little bit. The monitor, keyboard, and everything out. And give it a test boot. Turn it around, we'll get some of this other stuff over here. Up a little bit. Okay. Uh, push all that behind it. Called underneath of it. That. Keyboard and stuff out here. Monitor. Monitor. And go get the keyboard. Mouse. Power supply for the monitor. We'll do first boot. What we got? Power for the computer here. Better in here in a minute. Not yet. Word untangled. 
braided cables, they always get tangled up. At least the way that I, my cable management, they get a little tangled up. Plug in the board here. Plug in the mouse. Okay. I'll plug in the HDMI under and to the computer. Play I'll try to plug this in. But it boots up. See if it boots up. I have not pre tested this one, so Taking y'all along for the ride. Maybe if I can get this HDMI in here. Plugging it in wrong. We got it. Got it in. Flip switch. The switch. Make sure to double check. I got everything plugged in. Everything's looking good. Well, go ahead and go with first boot here. I'm gonna get a chair. And we'll move this lights over a little bit. What's up, Silent Killer? About to do first boot here in a minute. Let's see. This is the uh this is the moment. Plugged in. There we go. Got fans spinning, we got lights. If we get an output on the monitor here. Kinda double boot anyways. First boot. That's normal. Triple booting. Running through post sequence. Still going through post. And All right, now, now we're into the BIOS. We'll switch over to the capture card. Now we're into the BIOS. It looks like it's booted straight into the BIOS. Oh, that's kind of weird. But, uh, that's fine. We'll go ahead and do advanced mode here. Actually, let's go back to easy mode just to verify some stuff. So, we got the hard drive right here. It's, it's uh, being recognized. We got the, uh, one terabyte uh, NVMe boot drive. Go ahead and put the print at the top. Do XMP. Went ahead and found the profile 3216 Cas8C. That's good. CPU frequency is still in the auto overclock bullshit. 4.6. 1.24 volts actually really good i don't know about that we'll, we'll see how that goes um go ahead and get the fan set up here cpu fan we'll go ahead and get control mode pwm Head and these up a little bit oh i gotta do custom i think here manual okay then we'll be able to move these with shift 
go ahead and do the quite a bit. Of the fan curves here. All right, we'll apply that to these two only. One for the system fans here. And we're going to do PWM on that one too. Manual. Go through there and set all these to PWM real quick. Manual. Three and four. Set up just a basic fan curve here. And we're not going to do that till five. Curve gets that hot. Shouldn't under normal circumstances. Five. And just had to do five on that one. Fifty percent will be uh, so this one, let's say seventy fifty percent to sixty actually. Five percent for sixty and then anything below that thirty five percent. Five on that one. Get it even here. Better of a curve. Yeah. That, so I'll apply that to these their fans. Move a pretty good amount of air. Not too bad. Be more than enough for this system, so. Yeah, we'll go ahead and get it out of that. So we got XMP enabled. Let's set the boot. Go into advanced mode here. The, uh, the boot here. Option boot configuration. Boot, uh, it's already set. We're just gonna leave it, make changes I can. So I got XMP, that should only be there's one, one profile for this one. So, or I'm not gonna overclock, I'm just gonna leave it like it is. We're just gonna watch the. Frequency and the voltage here when we do our stress tests. Let's see how, how hot it gets. It might be putting a little bit too much voltage to it. If it is, we'll fix that. Let's see what all we got. We got the, the, the fan curves and uh, XMP profile for the RAM. Figured the boot option. Now I'm going to plug in this uh, Windows those drive. That install. Go and go to the side cam here while we're booting. It's a well for the boot option.
Do that 12 or delete. I don't know which. I might just boot into it. Wait and see what it does. See if it boots into that USB stick. I don't think it reset here. For some reason. Quick. It boots into the flash drive. Yep, it's gonna put it into the flash drive. So capture card. We're gonna get Windows started. Well, now it was on the NVMe drive. Product key and later and home. Product key. Those on this one. That's the NVMe drive. Pull that Windows install here. Didn't take very long. But, uh, go ahead and mess with the uh, RGB control here. I want to see what it can do. I don't know how much. The mode at the different modes. Turn off your lights real quick. Better see the RGB in this. Okay. Here and see what the mode button is. Speed of it. Really? Okay, we got a bunch of different modes here. There's the rainbow, I guess. Like a dual color. That is. Different modes here. Can't mount this controller anywhere outside, so. Have to, uh. That's to leave it. I'll, I'll just leave this rainbow. They can take the back panel off if they want to change it. Speed here, too. Oh, don't look too bad. Don't look too bad at all. We can see those through that front panel. You probably can, actually. Oh, yeah. See the be fans to the panel there. Go ahead and leave that there. I want the lights on it real quick. The light. Hopefully this doesn't boot back into the flash drive again. My hard drive from my SSD out. That's installed here. And we'll get the uh, Get all the drivers going. Benchmarks. See how it does. Shouldn't shouldn't break a sweat. 1080p. 1440p. Want to? 
1080p high refresh rate 144 hertz 280 hertz whatever this thing shouldn't break a sweat so like it's restarting here again Ah, oh, damn it. I think it booted back into the drive. No, it didn't. Okay. Alright. Change the song real quick. Another thing. Alright. United States. Yes. Make a local account. Turn off all this. Plastic in my finger from something. No device history. Uh, we don't want Cortana. Uh, we'll go ahead and let it do its thing here. Then uh, we'll get go ahead and get the Ethernet cable out while this thing does that. Plugged up. Drivers on it. Wait, plug the Ethernet cable in just in case. Tries to screw me. And then we'll get to. Uh... We have Windows installed here. Get uh, we got all the benchmark and stuff done. Uh, actually, we will get. We'll just get the drivers installed, and then we'll do cable management. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and get that done because I can't really gauge temperatures until I get both side panels on. We'll do cable management, and then we'll do benchmarks. Everything's running good. All right, so we plug the Ethernet cable in now. Windows update. Drivers and so on the other drivers. Three ninety Aurora Z three ninety Aurora. Stall drive for Windows there. Train might lag a little bit here while it's in downloading all these drivers. But, uh, so. Not looking bad. Gotta do cable management. That's gonna, that probably won't be too bad. Not that bad back there.
folks up here of the rig. Not bad. Not a bad way to spend eighteen hundred dollars. Thick. Should be uh should be good for many years to come. So should be uh good for a long, long time. Try to go ahead and get the uh, my my stuff installed here too. I have no night on here. Hold on. Yeah, we'll go and run this one. Go ahead and get some of the stuff installed. Most of the programs are installed, and then the cable management, and come back and do some benchmarking. Done after that. Avast here, then C Cleaner. Of course, experience. Uh, put just the behavior and file shield on here. Avast. Cleaner installed her too. That. Turn this off real quick. The smart cleaning. So what the we use running at frequency was 4.7. What's this thing? I do the see. Let's set the power plan real. High performance power plan. See what it runs at now. I'm gonna boost up to about 4.7. Um, bad. The uh, GeForce experience here installed.
not have an afterburner on here. What am I doing? I did. Weird. Is it? Fun. Let me go in here and make an account real quick. Oh. Back to it. Probably put it right here. Turn it here. You want fish dap? The, uh... Go ahead and get a G-Force experience account going here. Kind of stupid you gotta make an account for all this. pictures of the crosswalks all these capture things got that one though Is Account made here. Back. Take the drivers. Updates. One, so we'll download it.
All right, we're going to custom installation. Oh, the video doing a cyberpunk backplate for their. I don't know how cyberpunk PC it looks like. The uh, cyberpunk backplate there is pretty sick. But. All these drivers. Uh, shut it down, and we'll do. All we gotta do the. Uh, Chipset drivers and stuff. We'll go ahead and get all the drivers done. And then we'll do cable management. And we'll come back and do benchmarks. Go ahead and go back to this camera because the screen's gonna kind of flash and stuff it's all in the display drivers I think it's done flashing and whatnot, so. Start later. Go ahead and minimize that. Now we gotta go find the motherboard drivers. That Chrome is default. This is a Gigabyte D390 Aurora Pro driver. port and 64 bit e that one a chipset two land driver Go ahead and get these installed. I know Windows is a PC restart. Needs to happen. It will happen. Calm it down. Calm it down. Get set out of here while real tech's working on it, I guess. Okay, chipset. That's on my flash the screen a little bit too. I was gonna do all that. Okay. Got. On. Okay. 
Just have one more driver installed and shut her down and go to table management. That done. Last one here. All the driver. Good and shut it down. Down. Down here and we'll table management. Going here. Okay. Back just a little bit. I just select update and restart. I have to wait till it restarts and shut it down, I guess. I'll select that update and shut down. Okay, yeah, it's sounds... Okay. Shut down. Righty. Now we'll do cable management. It's always fun. Management benchmarks. What we got on that? So, lights. Okay. Now, thing best part about it, yeah, yeah. Oh, now we got to hold on to this. Uh, got a lot of room back here either, so they're gonna pick here than I thought. Green line will make it work. Unplug the 24 pin though, there, and all oh, those are around it. Go ahead and do that. Much as I don't want to, but I'm 24 pin pain as it was to install. Fuck that out. Hey, what is that? GPU cables. UK. Put 
plug the 24 pin for nothing. It's great. Great news. All right. Plug back in here. Plug the GPU cables though and see them uh, tidied up. Went in better the second time than it did the first time. First time getting that 24 pin in was rough. Go ahead and unplug these GPU cables. Those back through. Okay. Like I lost a cap here somewhere down here. Here somewhere. Oh, that's fails. I'll just use this one. I'll find that cap after. That's where I'm done, guaranteed. So I'm gonna use this one for now. Alright, let me get my zip ties, my anchors and whatnot. Snips are here somewhere. Right. Let's see what we got here. This through here. So. To. Fractal. You'll hear us. Need these right here. Be accessible. But the rest of this stuff tied in with it right here. And or not. gonna do it like this we're just gonna right here give it somewhat neat all these little bit tiny wires it's hard to keep them neat Actually, actually tie those right there. Little zip ties. Draw the front panel connectors. Fan wires. Tie those to the Table there. That one at the bottom there. Now in. There. These are all plenty of anchor points back here, though, so that is good.
this. Okay, we'll just throw them over. Here those in a minute. It. Be zip tied together here. A small one will fit. Them. Yeah. Here. You get the really small wires all the way. It's not. Much to do. RGB wires will deal with that. We get the controller. Forgot where I'm going to place the controller, so. That. Right here. This one, way to this. We can probably mount that right there on that tie down. Okay. That together. Around here a little bit. Hey. All these off. We'll put here. Do it like. Got. Yeah, that needs to come off. Do it up here. That'll be better. Tie right there. I want to just gather. Okay. Up that one with that the tie down there. Tie down. Flat. The other tie down down there to mount. Bottom part. Now 
change it. What we're going to do for now. The audio cable is going to go back in there. Fuck it out of the way. Okay. Side of cable, we're just going to take the side of cable right under here. What I can do with it. We're going to look that out. Don't need this as well. Uh, connector. Let me zip tying these up and sticking them in. The HD audio cable out for can't get that. We can probably stick it in this other motherboard or this other hard drive bay. Take this out. That for cable management. That up under there. Got it real nice. Moist. Got a cable. Now we'll put this uh, HD audio back in there. Good and clean back here now. Nice and clean here, mate. Now I'll put these uh, back around through here. RGB cables down. Back. So you don't know. Fine. Now I gotta figure out where those go. The bottom here would be the best. This route to go. Hey, my zip tie. Zip tie that one. Eight pin. Plug that one in. Zip tie this other pin side here. Bit a little tidier. Wrap these back around here. Keep them even. I can do. There we go. Kind of route them back around through here. It's looking pretty nice. I gotta figure out what we're gonna do. Those two cables. Let's see, we can probably put those at. Cut these two zip ties. Right up here, this right 
Put it in there. Go ahead and zip tie these together as well, just to kind of bring it, bring it in a little more. Side panel. Uh, good on that. Get this RGB controller plugged in, set up. I think. Mount it. No, oh, I can't mount it nowhere outside because it's data powered. I think. Probably just have to mount it like right here. Exactly. Yeah, I can put it back here. What's up, uh, Zertic1? How's it going? I mount it right there, but there would be no way. They always have to mount it in here. Got to mount it like right there. Saddle will reach. It will. Should have ran another SATA cable. Really should have ran another SATA cable. Fine though. That go came with a Velcro pad. Good. I'm planning to create a PC with a $850 budget. Not a bad budget. $850 is probably like Ryzen 5, 3600, and I don't know. You hey, $5600. 5700 if you go AMD 1650 super 1660 Ti maybe I, I don't prices are crazy right now are you uh, are you are you still playing at uh, 1080p there is there a tick hope I'm saying your name right no I apologize he's uh Cables hooked up. Why Intel on this build? Zertec, though, what you're asking? Why not choose Intel? Heard Intel bad. Intel's not bad. It's just uh, you get more bang for your buck with AMD. Um, Intel still dominates in IPC and single core performance for gaming. Like if you're just building a pure gaming rig, it's Intel all day long. If you're building like a content creation rig, um, something that you're actually going to utilize more than four to six cores on. AMD is the way to go, or if you just if you're on a budget, you can't go wrong with either of these days. But if you're on a budget that like this, this one is almost as close to 2K, so I'm not gonna go AMD for a pure gaming rig for 2K. I can help it. Could, but mount this. So we mount it. Hold on, I think I 
I can move. Yeah, I can do this. Yeah, I can put here backwards. Put one here and enough pressure to bring these down here. Create pocket here to put this in. Stay here. Here. I get all these here uh, managed. Out of here for a second. Underneath that. Thanks for the follow there, Zertic. Appreciate it. Pretty much have a live build of some kind. Pretty much every Saturday. Live build or some kind of project. Even though I will won't be I, I will not be doing one next Saturday I'll be out of town so it won't be next Saturday but about every Saturday have one on this so the fun part trying to get all this here and i can zip tie this to this better better to go up under it under this doesn't create too much pressure on this Nectar. Yeah, I think that's actually better. Was AMD Ryzen 5 3600 and RTX 2060. Two parts good for streaming. Oh yeah, you can 100% stream with that. Um, just use the. Uh, just use the inv the invec encoder on the GPU, and you'll be fine. You can one hundred percent create a streaming PC for eight hundred fifty dollars. You can actually spend less than that now. Just uh, go with whatever processor you want, and then a uh, Nvidia card, anything from a sixteen fifty super and up. It's the new uh, Turing uh, encoder, so 2060's got it. I would recommend a 2060 Super if you can if you can fit it, though. I think there's a 2060 Super. Could be wrong, but if there's a 2060 Super and you can fit it in your budget, I'd recommend that over just a normal 2060. Not, nah, it's fine. But uh, if you if if but if you can fit it work out a little better zip tie all these together here put a lot of pressure on this because I don't want to pull out of the sockets But yeah, but about about eight hundred fifty dollars to that, like eight to eight hundred to a thousand U.S. dollars is a good it's a good range for a really good PC nowadays. So be just fine.
up enough to where we can stuff them down in there. Good, make sure all this stuff is plugged in. Cool. I'm gonna add these in. Try to. Up top behind it. He's into one. Slack down here. You thinking Black Friday PC parts will come cheaper this year? Uh, a little bit. You can usually find some decent deals around Black Friday and Christmas. Um, Nvidia is going to be coming out with their new GPUs this fall. Uh, Intel already came out with their CPUs. They're just not in stock. AMD I think is releasing more CPUs this fall, so. You wait till Black Friday, you can probably snag some of the current PC hardware for a little cheaper. Since the newer stuff will be out, but current gen stuff is uh, already really good. Yeah, what you said though, Ryzen 5, 3600, and 2060, that's, that's perfect. So you might be able to snag a 2060 Super for a little cheaper during Black Friday. If you're, uh, if you watch some sales. If you're not, keep your eye on like New Egg and Amazon and whatnot. If you're uh, if you're if you're here from the states, anyways, exactly where you're from. try to just bundled in with this GTX Gigabyte GTX 6 GTX Gigabyte GeForce GTX 1650 Super why this is this old no it's not old one of the uh, the newer cards that came out last year I think 1650 Super is a good Good budget GPU. Sixteen fifty supers up. Uh, uh, really good budget GPU, actually. Sixteen sixty Ti is a little better, but marginally. 1660 Ti is pretty much just a little bit cheaper. Twenty sixty. But if you can fit a 2060, a 2060 is better than a 1650. So, if I can stream with that graphics card or play games like Modern Warfare. Yeah, you can, uh, with the 1650 or 2060, you can, you can, you can still stream and, and play games. Even like, even like Modern Warfare, Fortnite, uh, PUBG, I don't know what else. What's popular? Tarkov, uh hey from Tarkov. Um stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean you can play all those at uh ten eighty P. So But you can you can spend a little extra money and get the twenty sixty or the twenty sixty super, I would definitely go for that. It's gonna be the better card. Well, got everything tidied up here. Hope I can get the back panel on. Taking out Clinton Thor. I don't think that back panel. Um, it's pretty pretty slim. We're not gonna have a lot of 
room to play with there. I'll wait and see there on. Um, it's all gonna fit or not. Kind of like a game. It's like, will it fit? Will it blend? That's still a thing. Channel still alive. They still over blending stuff on a Blendtec blender. It was like the O, like that was one of the OG YouTube channels. All right, let's see if we can. Uh, Gonna kind of bring this in a little bit more. Okay. All these off. It's looking pretty good to me. Yeah. I'm looking too bad if I can get everything uh if i can get the side panel on like the main thing but if you're still if you're still in here uh silent killer um you will take the side panel off like to change the the uh like the fan leds and stuff you'll just have to hit the switch here to change the mode You'll have to hit the switch right here to change the mode. The switch over here changes the LED color on the on the on the uh, fans or the LED speed. My bad. This one changes the speed of what of how fast it goes, how fast the color switch and flash. This one changes the mode here on uh, if you want like RGB or you want like just like solid color or you want to swap between two colors, whatever. So. All right, let's get the let's see if we can get the side panel on. Uh, oh, all this cleaned up here. And we'll get to the benchmarking for the games, I guess I should say. Well, a few games that I think I got have benchmarks built in. See if I can get the side panel on here. And get it real quick. Hope this thing had a little bit of play in it, but or a little bit of a, a bulge in it, but it's pretty flat. But I think it'll fit. Be a little bit tight, but fine. Nice and even here. A little bit of a bulge on the side there, but overall, not bad. $850 will it be the, my first PC because I'm using laptops to buy a better CPU or a better, or a better graphics card. I want to stream games. So, what you said, uh, Zertic 1, uh, the Ryzen 5 3600 and the RTX 2060 um, that's I mean that right there you can you can play like whatever like the game you said modern warfare you can play like you can play that pretty much at uh, pretty close to max settings or probably max settings actually and uh, and still be able to stream at 720p or 900p that's the two that I would recommend that you stream at um, 720 is kind of more ideal but you'll use your uh, the encoder in your GPU whenever you set up like Streamlabs or OBS, um, or you can use just Nvidia Shadowplay. But for eight hundred fifty dollars, I think your best bet would be the Ryzen five thirty six hundred and the RTX twenty sixty. All right, let's get this tempered glass side panel on here. On it. 
You know, air's out. That was out too. Hm. Well then. Just have to use one of these uh coffee filters. Clean the side panel later real good. Looks real good for delivery. This one's got orientation that's on here. Go ahead. Let's get this. Go ahead and get the uh, film off of it. Down there. Room on there to hold it while I peel that off. Right, where is my case screw? Side panel on here. I think it's well, this one's not tinted. Thought it was, but it's not. RGB will shine through through the screw. Get uh, this on here. Start the benchmarking. Had to get steam installed. My well, steam's already installed. We'll have to get play and stuff, but. Shouldn't take very long. Okay. More zip ties here to clean up. Go ahead and get everything plugged back in. Get it all going. Okay, then we'll get MI plugged in. It's everything there. Okay. All this over here. Thing situated here. All right, let's power it back up. All these lights. All right. The windows here. My capture card picks it up. There you go. Thing update. On an account, Discord. What one? Oh, yeah, we have to get logged in. So, put y'all on VRB while I get logged into my account here. Trying new PC. Yep, we're about to 
about to uh, install some games and see what it does so I get logged in all my accounts here Logged in the Steam Guard here. I have to log in. Play. Well, oh, I got on here. Counter Strike plus Fortnite plus GTA. If you net fast. Um, I, I don't think I got Fortnite on here. I had GTA. I don't know if I still do. We could definitely do Counter Strike though, if you want to see that. Counter Strike don't take very long. I think oh, I got Counter Strike on here. Let's see what we got on here. Steam games. So I got GTA on here. Then I got Crisis. Try that too. I got Fortnite on here. We'll uh, we could try run that. I know I can't run Call of Duty because it's it's just gonna give me errors. So no Call of Duty is gonna give me. Plane just flew over. Um, no Call of Duty is gonna give me errors. Unless I un like just installed the whole thing, it was weird like that. Fortnite and possibly GTA. I get GTA verified here. Auto. Go ahead and make one like a new very on that. Did I already recognize that other drive? You'll do need to get to disk management and format the other drive. There it is. Simple volume. E the uh storage drive okay the uh, MSI afterburn well saw that real quick Not from Guru 3D here. Way we can do what our our temps and everything are. You guys a YouTube channel? I do. It's uh, I don't really do a whole lot on it anymore. I pretty much just upload these streams to it, but um, it is on my channel down there under social links. Uh, I think my Twitter, my Instagram, and my YouTube. Feel free to follow those. Subscribe if you want to. So we'll go. Burner set up here.
Get Reva set up here so we can have our real time stats. Played in game. Doing that, I'm gonna try to get GTA started. Okay, on this other drive. Shoulder. So we'll put it on here first. Create the uh, create the file system. Copy it over from my other drive. It'll be faster. It's going from SSD to SSD. Okay. Old. All this stuff. Bigger afterburner here. Okay, then we'll go back over here and go to on screen play to Yay. Have to go here. Yeah, we'll copy that. This. Folder. Copy everything. Folder, I guess. We'll do it this way, actually. We'll go here. this that get from here and put it here take three minutes all right Bigger mess afterburner in the meantime here. Got a fan curve. Too hot anyway. That's about there. Motherboard is very important card. Uh, the motherboard is it's it's important depending on what you want to do, uh, and depending on your processor, um, it, it's kind of important. Yeah, I mean you might I mean you mainly just want to get one with the the same socket and the correct chipset. So, like for what you were talking about earlier, your Ryzen five thirty six hundred, you'd want to go B four fifty or B five fifty with that. Um, you don't want to get a B450 or B550 motherboard like MSI Tomahawk or ASRock Pro 4 M B450 or B550 depends on what, what your build is if you go Intel then 9th gen Intel is E390 the new one is uh, what is the new chipset Whatever the new one is for 10th gen processors, but you but you have to match your socket and your chipset. So your most important thing there. The GPU temperature, edge. 
Vintage core clock. Clock. Here. Vintage. Clock. Ram usage. Frame rate. Thing, I think. He's still copying. Go with the sound into Epic here. So in Fortnite, be on the side. Okay. Ah, show it. So sound in Epic Games here. Come on, Epic Games. Let me count. This is the password. Ailer. Ailer. Capital O. Factor in here. Go. Good. All right. Uh, 
Fortnite started. Close up. Every game is weird. You gotta do this. <coughs> so, Fortnite will copy this folder. Copy all these folders. Here, on Epic Games, Fortnite, all that into there. Yeah, got done though. Counter Strike, yeah. Counter Strike, twenty gigs. Have I got that? I might have that on the server and on BRB again, real quick. If I got it saved on here, if I can copy it over real quick. No, oh, don't have it saved. Fortunately. Probably install it real quick though. You might lag here a little bit though. And throttle it down there a little bit. Ring doesn't completely, completely uh, die out. The download here. Fortnite copied over. Games again. Hope oh, I don't want to log back in. Verify the files here.
I'm trying to install 37 gigs. Like, what are you talking about? I think it's this. 76. Update that I missed or something. Well, on this team, try to fly through this real quick and figure out Fortnite. I was cleaned up while downloading. It only take about four or five minutes. Sorry for the lag there while this is uh, downloading. Down here in a couple minutes. Yeah, about three more minutes and I'll be back to normal here.
we got about a minute and a half left and yes go will be installed on the gta benchmark first though About 50 seconds. All right, now that I got done. Verify all these files real quick. We're gonna run the benchmark on CSGO real quick. See how high it goes. CSGO benchmark here real quick, then we'll do GTA and then I don't know if we can do Fortnite. It's gonna take a long time to download, I think. Apparently I had an update since I copied it over to my uh external drive. All right, let's go ahead and get the setting Mac out of here. Uh, Go and run the benchmark here. Did ever got maps FPS benchmark.
out here. Go over and enable these. Don't they really do anything? I always do it anyways. This benchmark run here. But FPS we get, I'm going to say around five to 600. Roughly. I don't know if it'll even max out the GPU though. Yeah, it's got a really easy game to run for this system. More, uh, a little more CPU intensive though than most games. We're only setting in about 80% usage max so far on the GP. Hovering in the high 60s. Smoke right here does uh, get the FPS down though. Everything stock clocks. Thing we did was do the XMP profile on the RAM. Uh oh. what we get here On it. Aim. So we got FPS benchmark average frame rate was 427. I said five, but pretty close. Not bad. 427 FPS with CSGO max out 1080p. We'll run GTA now. Auto. I installed it. I just copy the files over. I think I just. I'll just copy the files over. Yeah, I did. I gotta discover all of them. What else? What the benchmark? I got I think Far Cry. I'd like to run uh, Crisis as well. She gonna get on Crisis Three. Can it run Crisis? Doing that. Get uh, Origin installed here. Crisis after Far Cry. I don't think we're going to be able to do Fortnite. Crisis is still a pretty demanding game, so. Try that. Get logged into Origin here real quick. Crap. Go. 
By the time I get logged into Origin, GTA should be done, I think. Send me an email here. Log in verification. See if we can't get the Mala Games Library Crisis at Crisis. Same thing for Origin here. We're going to out of that or copy over the files copy i should copy the files inside the folder inside of that folder but might not matter Run the GTA benchmark while this is uh, covering these files. I have a feeling we're going to have to restart GTA a couple times to apply all the graphical settings. Alright, let's see if it'll. Pick it up. Games library. I'm just gonna verify those files. Sometimes it takes a while. It's finalizing, so thinking it's verifying them. Why is that? DA. Let's run the benchmark on here. Get the uh, graphical settings. We'll probably have to restart at least one time. Get the graphics maxed out. Oh, we got to install a Rockstar launcher. I forgot about that. That is great. Guess I have to run it. I don't know. How this works. Got it. Picked up crack there, so. Good uh, throttle, I guess throttle this uh, down a little bit. Like it'll affect the stream too much.
There we go. I think as long as it keeps it right there, it'll be fine. How long it's gonna take though. Drop signs at Rockstar Games Launch. You don't really want me to sign a social club. I was doing something. Don't know what. Yes. Go ahead and get through this startup screen and we get to the settings here. Max everything out pretty much. Max everything out besides the one. There's one setting that don't max out. SAA for the grass or something like that. Just tanks your frame rate. You say gone. Here. That's the one, the MSAA. Maybe that's one of these. If you turn on it, uh, tanks your frame rate. I don't know what it is. Try that. Start. Run the benchmark when it boots back up here. Start back up. Huh. Play back in the full screen. Run the benchmark. Or on benchmark. See what we get. Well, I have V-Sync off. Head off before it restarted.
So yeah, we're getting over 120. Next out, GTA. Still barely keeping over a hundred. Might drop right here when it goes down to the bridge. Yep. Got down to 99 there for a minute. Most part we're setting over 140 though. That's not too bad. I like it's pushing the GPU pretty hard. And uh ETA is another one of those CPU intensive games as well. So uh, we're setting about 50% usage on the CPU. Stand really cool though at 50, we're standing right under 60 degrees. Playing really good. 4.6 gigahertz. Not bad at all. Yeah, this thing's running great. Temps are all in check. Things looking good. I'm uh, kind of interested to see how Crisis does though. That's the uh, that's the ultimate test. If you look back at my last build, it was the uh, Horizon 5 1600, 16 gigs of 3000 speed RAM, and the RX 470, 4 gigabyte, it ran Crisis maxed out at 50 FPS average. So, what? Uh, start GT. Start it. Stop it. The budget, budget build, um, pretty much got 50 FPS on Crisis 1080p Ultra. Closes. Um, so we'll see what this one gets. So we'll go ahead and open up Crisis here. Hoping this thing saved my last save to the cloud. Wait, well, I want to go to a new game again. See you though. Lost signal. Yeah, guard trapped out there for a second. Right now. Really gonna make me? Dang it! Make a new campaign again. Believe it. I want to get a save and just keep it on here. Crisis. Oh, there's cloud saves on Origin though. Not enabled for this game or something. Not. 
Not cloud saves on here. Settings at location setting all the saves cloud storage is on. Maybe crisis isn't supported. I don't know. I gotta go through this fucking whole intro. Come on, Origin. Uh, yanking me chain. Not to call online and find me like a 100% crisis save or something. Because there's a mission that I like, I would like to just do for benchmarks. It's that dome one. It really pushes the system hard. Like even harder than the first level where it's raining. Uh oh, we'll see. Be a way you can skip this intro. I hope when I do crisis remaster that you can skip the intro. Cool and all, but yeah, get past this. Hopefully I can get past this intro here sometime today. Own crisis. Test be one of the longest intros in any game. Like they save the outro, like the credits, for the uh, intro here. They make you watch them. Like, bro, I heard you like credits, bro. Here's all your credits, bro, but at the intro, bro. Can't skip it, bro. All right, here we go. Almost there. Flying on, flying in on the little birds. Yes, get in here. Right, don't worry. That shit. Get some graphic settings here. Graphic. How uh, it'll go? Yeah. Very high. V sync no. Like very high. Yo. That. Yes. I was gonna tell. Me. Oh. Start. All right, go ahead. Max out everything. Turn motion blur off. Start the game. I really hope it saved up progress. <laughs> Please. Please save my progress. I'm about to watch that again. Now, hopefully, we can get back in there and uh, back to it. Shit. 
achieved with cry engine follow this now okay all right all right all right back into it now max out crisis three here we go does all this get it here we get above 70 up still amazingly hard to run you gotta think this game came out in what 2013 2012 something like that now we're here what seven eight years later almost a two thousand dollar system barely achieve above 60 fps maxed out there wasn't a single system back in the day i guarantee you that could get over 60 fps when this game was released because there's just a destroyer of systems at least not in that first part once you get up here the fps kind of evens out a little more that first part down there where it's raining no you're gonna be it's always right there there's like a dip there's some kind of something to do with the story right there loading doesn't happen again when you go back over it i think it looks amazing though what it is graphically detailed as modern game all right there always drops fps for some reason my rifle he's got I heard that. Well, it's critical. I don't know if it still is. Lays are not very accurate. I can't run crisis. Can run a crisis. That's good. Better to this scene where the uh rain and I get my bow. Got power kick. Bow now, boys, hell yeah. Oh, FPS drops out here. Mean FPS drops. Here. Going back in. Stealth mode engaged. Me, please. Me, I 
Can you hit him? Ammo. That rose. Yeah. Oh no. In here. Hey for grandpa to get up here. Very pleasant experience on crisis. Bad experience here. All the way, Grampy. An averaging about, I don't know, 65, 70 FPS on here, maxed out. So I'm happy with that. More than happy with that. If we can get, uh, Far Cry demo or Far Cry New Dawn copied over here. That on here. I don't. Far Cry either. Hard up. Fortnite got quite a while. It's about half done. Let's do a, uh, Mark on got could do Assassin's Creed Origins benchmark. That's good origins benchmark is pretty CPU intensive, so I'll try that. Maybe by that time it uh Fortnite will be done. Hopefully anyway. How long have we been active for? About five, a little five hours. Not too bad. Get these two benchmarks done, and we'll probably call it after that, but. Probably about another 30 minutes or so, give or take. Yeah, there won't be a, there won't be a build stream next weekend. I won't be in town. Um, and, uh, it'll probably be a gaming stream tomorrow afternoon. More than like, what's Father's Day though? Maybe there might be a, might be a gaming stream tomorrow afternoon, I'm not sure. There won't be a build stream next weekend. Probably a gaming stream next weekend, maybe. Uh, next build stream will probably be the Saturday after next. One with another budget build. So this time we're going a little different route than last time. <laughs> All right, let's see. Not done here. Get steam. The uh, this was I was this on. Yeah, it was. Cool, cool, cool. But uh, verify these files here. Hopefully, hopefully this doesn't have an update. Bag real quick and put all this stuff in. So, right back while this does this.
all right let's go ahead and get to uh, origins going here Hope I don't want to sign into you play. Want to sign into you play. Wait and see here. Oh, really? What I'm saying to you play, bro? Uh, Alright. I guess I'm into you play here. Should have known better. Thought I'd get away smooth, but didn't work. Two factor signed in here. Get this underway. Hopefully it will. It all cleaned up a little bit. Did it run? Chilling. Dude. Change a couple settings around. Yeah, all right. I think he'll do pretty good on this benchmark as well. Wait and see here. Options. The.
it off. FPS lemon it off. Okay. No one in the graphics. Graphics quality ultra high. Uh, adapter, no, I don't want that. Shadows ultra high. Textures, everything's maxed out, looks like. Maxed out. This one, how do you benchmark? That one you had to run it somewhere in the menu. Uh, Assassin's Creed, uh, Origins here is pretty difficult to run as well. It's a Ubisoft game, so it's not that well optimized, but um, still a difficult game to run though. So, if I can get over 100 FPS, I'll be happy with that. Or average 100. Turn down shadows, you probably gain a couple. A little couple FPS there. I just went ahead and let the shadows on ultra for for uh for shits and giggles. So I don't know if Fortnite's gonna be done. Now this is done or not. It is, and we'll go ahead and run it too. I don't know if it will be or not though. We'll see. I oh, get yeah. performance very high. Average FPS was 93. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. The Fortnite done. Got this. Out of this, I know Fortnite's not done because I don't want to play it. But if it's done, I'll play it. If not, then go ahead and call it there. Get out of Origins here. Taking a minute. On Origins, what are you doing? Like Origins, Assassin's Creed Origins here is gonna close. Not looking good, anyways. Steam. Look at that, yeah, it's not done yet. So uh we'll go ahead and call it there. I'm not worried about that, so 
So I got a couple more things to, to run on here and stress test it for a while. Just see what the temps look like. But uh, overall, I mean, performed just like I figured a high and system would. So uh, over 100 FPS at 1080p on pretty much every game. Um, I mean, it's out there. So, uh, get a couple more things installed, get the benchmarks run. Um, or I mean the stress test run, get everything tested and it'll be ready to get delivered. But, uh, appreciate, appreciate everybody tuning in and, uh, and next weekend we won't have enough. We won't have a live build. I'm not going to be, I'm going to be here. Uh, but, uh, probably a gaming stream tomorrow and a gaming stream next weekend. Possibly tomorrow. I don't know. We'll wait and see. But definitely gaming stream next Sunday. Saturday after that. Um, it's not 4th of July. The 4th of July, I might not have one either. Yeah, 4th of July is going to be that Saturday. So we probably won't have one that the weekend either then, actually. Might have to move that to that Sunday or something. I don't We'll figure something out. We might have it on that third, actually. We might have the gaming stream for... Instead of having it on the 4th of July, we'll have it on the third. So uh, we'll wait to see how that goes. But, uh... Appreciate everybody tuning in. Or I'm going to call it. So peace out, everybody.